Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find Animal Welfare Certified Rib Roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd-pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone-in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready-to-eat sides, head to the prepared food section. Done. And remember that Whole Foods Market caters. Order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com. Bring the holiday magic with Whole Foods Market. It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 2396, and I'm Dr. Neil Mali. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. And if you're in the U.S. and send in a relevant question, we'll visit the post office and personally mail you a physical copy of the Optimal Living Daily Workbook, as long as we have copies left, of course. If you're outside of the U.S., we'll email you a digital copy, and I'll tell you how to send in a question at the very end of the show. But for now, let's jump right in and hear today's question as we optimize your life. Today's question came via email. Andy writes, Hi, Dr. Neil, love the show and all the really in-depth information that you share. I've recently begun wearing barefoot shoes and feel much more comfortable in them, but I wondered if the science actually matches the claimed benefit. Thank you so much for taking the time to send in your question, Andy. I really appreciate it and appreciate your feedback. I'm so glad you find this show so helpful. All right, related to your question, Researchers have found that running-related injuries, in general, appear to be increasing. Now, no one can be sure if this is due to the fact that, one, more people are taking part in running recreationally, two, more people are reporting their injuries when they do happen, three, running shoes are partially to blame for this increase, or four, all of these factors combined. Either way, Because running shoes are potential suspects here, some have argued that we should go back to running like our ancestors did, meaning we should go back to running barefoot. There are even some researchers that believe by walking and running barefoot, we can prevent injuries and falls through better awareness of our feet and their movements. Eventually, the idea of a minimalist, barefoot-style running shoe came into being. It was discovered that runners that wear the usual running shoes, not the barefoot-style minimalist ones, follow a typical running pattern. The heels of their feet make contact with the ground first. But those that run barefoot tend to run a little differently. They tend to make contact with the ground with the middle of their foot, or even the front of their feet. Now, is one form better than the other? Well, again, some scientists believe hitting the ground with the front or middle of our feet may help protect the heel, which is a common source of injury. Running barefoot may also help trigger more of a response from our calf muscles, which can not only prevent injury, but also improve overall running performance. But with these adaptations to running barefoot, there is the potential for more use of the Achilles tendon. More Achilles tendon use means more chances for injury in that part of the body. So a team of researchers conducted a meta-analysis to see if our modern-day running shoes are partially to blame for this increase in running injuries. A meta-analysis, remember, is a study conducted on other already published studies. This is what usually makes meta-analyses so great. Researchers find studies that have already been conducted, determine whether the studies were performed well, and then analyze those studies and make conclusions and recommendations. In fact, meta-analyses are especially useful when one study seems to say one thing, like barefoot running is good for preventing injury, while another study seems to say the complete opposite, that barefoot running doesn't seem to prevent injury or may increase the likelihood of injury. Usually, by the end of the meta-analysis, 
we have a better idea of which argument is likely to be correct. Now, the researchers of this meta-analysis did say that there is no single factor that will be able to explain why there's this increase in running-related injuries, and that goes for running shoes. In fact, what they found was that running barefoot or using minimalist barefoot-style running shoes may or may not increase running-related injuries. They said that after conducting their meta-analysis, the results were inconclusive. This is frustrating for me because I like to give my listeners real answers like, yes, this is good for you, or no, don't do it. Here, I honestly can't say. But here's what I can say based on what most podiatrists, meaning doctors that specialize in feet, would recommend. When looking for a running shoe, the goal is to find one that acts as a shock absorber with good cushioning at the heel and toes. They should feel lightweight, but offer stability at the same time. And ideally, they should have some mesh to allow air to flow to the feet. Cool, dry feet, after all, mean better performance. Now, you could always consult with a podiatrist to see what they would recommend for you. They'll perform an analysis of your feet, like whether you have a high arch or are a bit more flat-footed, as well as your gait, meaning what's your posture like when you walk or run, and how your feet strike the ground in each situation. This would be the best way to help provide you with guidance on the shoes that are right for you, which is basically what the authors of the meta-analysis found. For me, I found my feet are really picky. So something I do, which is not backed by research, but just something I found helpful, is to try on a bunch of shoes, of course. But as I'm trying them on, I ask myself, could I walk around all day at Disneyland in these? Would I still feel comfortable at midnight when the park closes or would I be begging to take them off? I call it my amusement park test for shoes. If the shoes I'm trying on could keep me comfortable after a long day at an amusement park, I'm sure I'll be comfortable running in them. So I'm sorry, Andy, that the research up to this point is inconclusive when it comes to those barefoot shoes. So what I would say is if those barefoot minimalist running shoes work for you and you're staying healthy and happy, then by all means, continue to use them. But if you find you're experiencing some shin splints or pain in your Achilles or plantar fascia, then it may be time to try on a different type of shoe. Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find Animal Welfare Certified Rib Roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd-pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone-in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready-to-eat sides, head to the prepared food section. Done. And remember that Whole Foods Market caters. Order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com. Bring the holiday magic with Whole Foods Market. Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like max cushion, max soft landings with DNA Loft V2 foam, and max smooth rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. And again, thank you for taking the time to send in your question, Andy. Now, if you want to send in a question to be answered right here on the show, plus get a copy of the Optimal Living Daily Workbook, you can email a question to health at oldpodcast.com. Or if you want to hear your own voice on the podcast, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. Right on that page, you can record straight from your computer's microphone It's really easy. You can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 1-61-I-LOVE-O-H-D. That's 1-614-568-3643. Thank you so much for emailing and calling in your questions and leaving audio questions. This is my favorite part of the show. But with that, I'm sad because that's the end of another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through. I hope you have a wonderful start to your weekend. And of course, I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.